So I made my way up to the Hemingwell hearing that there's a bit of an issue with a car park and I was angry as hell. I even started making an angry video where I even ripped off their no parking sign, so I do apologise about that. But then, walking past the actual church itself, a wonderful lady led me by the hand straight in to meet the pastor and get the facts. This is what's going on on the Hemingwell. Well, hello, you beautiful lot. Welcome to today's lovely episode of Purple Vision. Now, I'm up here on Gillybot Lane, the Hemingwell, the place I was born and bred, and I love it so much. But there has been a little bit of an issue with the Swallow car park. Now, I don't know if you remember the Swallow, but it was the old pub at the Hemingwell. It was rough as anything. But now it's been turned into a Signet's nursery, and you also have the Hemingwell shop there and a community centre. Now, recently, there were a couple of signs that were put up on a tree saying no parking. So I've had to do a little bit of investigation because the residents are actually pretty angry about it but of course there's always two sides to a story so i'm joined here with pastor diana joyce of the hope center who can kind of give a little bit of clarity and her side of the story so i introduce you diana how are you my lovely all right thank you very pleased to meet you today yeah i'm glad i've bumped into you too so um Right, so we have a little bit of a problem with the, the yeah. parking down there and I think there is a little bit of lack, un, lack of understanding of what's going on. So yeah. from what I gather, people are trying to park in there to pick up their children and That's right. And there's cars already there that have been left yeah. overnight and things. So Well, I've actually seen a, a mum get trapped in, she's not able to go and get her child from the nursery um, and it's chock-a-block and if you know what it's like when you've got kids and you go to pick up one child from one nursery and then you've got to get to another school. So we've had people complain to us about that and say that I get here and I can't actually pick up my um, child. On a Monday, we have feed, feed the Need, it's really busy. Oh, feed the Need, isn't that a, another food bank, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. You're yeah, awesome. Yeah, so on a Monday, we've had people say that I'd like to come and get my food, but I can't even get onto the in the car park. And so not everybody can actually carry bags. So that so because people were complaining to us, we thought, well, do you know what we'll have to say then? Can other people not um, park there? Yeah, yeah. And um, we, now, I'm, now I'm hearing that it's really caused a problem. It really has, it just a little yeah. bit, yeah. But, so. but, but I do understand that apparently some people can't park outside their own place, so I think that Linda, one of the deacons, and other people have, have had, you know, to, spoken to other people about a, some kind of a... Comp- compromise yeah, I mean, whether they can visit on certain days. Linda was actually in the process of making like a little slip okay. with those families stating that they can park there. Oh, okay. So, That's a good so idea. So we're really open to a solution, really. Yeah, okay. So th- this is a just be all end all. So yeah. they're, they're, they're looking for a compromise and, and I, I yeah. love that because it has upset quite a lot of people because there is a bit of lack of understanding so um, I think mainly with with the shop people will have to go around the back just whilst it's really busy if I am afraid to say it but I think if if people continue to park down there and blocking those in from Signets and for the food bank then it may be something like having um, like a parking company look over it or even cameras and saying all right you can stay like a half an hour stay or or something like that just, you know, we are happy. We want it to be a compromise. So, um, but it's just very frust- frustrating when we've got events on down there and we go there and none, none of us can get on there. Yeah. So, it's, well, what do you do? That's it. Um, though I did hear a rumour, but looking on the plans, it doesn't actually state it, but they, they were saying that we were going to change the community centre. Yeah. Well, that, well, OK, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned this. We're furious yeah. about this. Yeah. Um, we understand that somebody has said that we want to rebuild a community centre and a church. We want a new church. Mm. We've outgrown this one. On Sometimes on Sundays, there is a, we are standing room only. Um, I did challenge this and said, well, where has this been written? And when I looked for myself, that is the wording on the original application. And it's an error. And we are furious. Yeah. And we are challenging this. We are not happy that it has said that, that we want a new community centre. We it's, do it's not, not. There's what you nothing wrong do. with the community centre down there. There's some wonderful work that is that is happening down there. 
we do not, we're not interested in a new community centre. We new literally church. just want a bigger church because we've got the blessing of outgrowing this, this current one. Okay. So I just want to put that on the, on the record to clear that up. We do not want to rebuild a community centre. We are challenging the architects who submitted the original application um, because it should just say church. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, no, that's amazing, love. And I, I'm so glad I bumped into you. I'm glad you bumped into you. Yeah, because I have to say, That's I was pretty truth. angry when I was doing my yeah. first video, and I come up to the church here, and a lady said, "Purple, purple, you must come meet this lovely lady." And I'm glad I have. So glad I met you. Yeah, and I'm glad I've got the full story as well. So I don't know where this is going to go from here, but I'm hoping William Inskip, the councillor here, can kind of liaison and try and come to some resolution, a good compromise for all residents, because we don't want to be jumping on anybody's toes or nothing. So yeah, there you go. <sighs> So I did forget to mention that this church group, they are looking to knock the old one down, have it rebuilt and have four homes built around it just for the church lot. So, yeah, it's quite positive. Um, but as for the parking, I'm still in two minds about that one. But at least you got the facts. Yeah, that's lovely. Sorry, I didn't do an outro, did I? So there's always two sides to the story and I get how residents are real angry about being told what to do but when you hear the stories that they're trying to do good for the heaven world trying to set up these food banks but people can't get in to pick up their food because there's cars been left there uh, and yeah I, I i get that but there must be some kind of compromise instead of saying no parking whatsoever there's got to be a compromise there you go finally purple purple's getting the facts from both sides <laughs> <laughs> if you like the video, hit that like and subscribe. And if you hear anything else in your local area that you feel I need to kind of know about and get the word out, because we have 700 views per video now, so that's a lot of Wellingborough watching. So if you have anything you feel you need to let me know, then come message over on Purple Vision, over on Facebook. You can leave a message on YouTube, but I have to be very careful of what I put on there. So. With all that in mind, I hope you have a beautiful one. I'll see you again for another episode of Purple Vision.